Oral history is a widely used and widely varying term, depending on who you ask. According to oralhistory.org, oral history is the field of study and a method of gathering, preserving, and interpreting the voices and memories of people, communities, and participants in past events. In short, oral history is the sharing and maintenance of verbal stories. So now that we have a baseline definition for what oral history is, we can ask the more complex question of when and where it started. Storytelling is one of the oldest forms of sharing history, with songs, chants, and epic poems memorializing iconic and historic moments. Many of Shakespeare's plays documented the reigns of English kings in the 1500s. Even the popular children's nursery rhyme, Ring Around the Rosy, is believed to retell the devastation of the bubonic plague in 1600s England. While these all capture history in a meaningful and transferable way, many credit Alan Nevins with bringing the term oral history into the mainstream. Alan Nevins was an American historian and journalist from Camp Point, Illinois. He began his career working in newspapers such as the New York Evening Post and the New York Sun before joining the history faculty of Columbia University in 1929. Much of his work at the university was centered around World War II and the Civil War, which led to the establishment of Columbia's Oral History Research Office, the first of its kind. In the book, The American Archivist, Volume 28, Saul Benson of Brandeis University wrote that, Nevins looked upon the Oral History Research Office as an organization that in a systematic way could obtain from the lips and papers of living Americans who led significant lives a full record of their participation in the political, economic, and cultural affairs of the nation. He continued on to make two specific points that distinguish oral history from traditional storytelling. First, his purpose was to prepare such material for the use of future historians, and second, it was his conviction that the individual played an important role in history, and that an individual's autobiography might in future serve as a key to an understanding of contemporary historical movements. The second point is key to understanding the rise of oral history in the 60s and 70s, where it was used to document the many movements at the time in a non-discriminatory way. Unlike other facets of recording history, which were typically regarded as work for proper historians, oral history was, and is, an extremely accessible practice to participate in. All one needs to start is a mic, a subject, and a well-researched topic. This resulted in people whose voices were traditionally ignored in history, such as women, minorities, the LGBTQ community, and low-income individuals, to have a voice in remembering the past. Studs Terkel, a Chicago radio personality turned author and oral historian, was a major player in bringing the perspectives of the everyday person into the spotlight. After becoming famous for his engaging radio interviews, he began publishing books based on conversations he recorded on tape. Books such as Division Street America, which consists of 70 interviews with people in Chicago, and his Pulitzer Prize winning book, The Good War, an oral history documentation of individuals' World War II experiences. Turkle wrote about the tape recorder that, it can be used to capture the thoughts of the non-celebrated. On the steps of a public housing project, in a framed bungalow, in a furnished apartment, in a parked car. And these statistics become persons, each one unique. I am constantly astonished. As more social movements and impactful events continued to happen, combined with the expansion of technology, many universities and institutions began establishing oral history departments. Here at Oklahoma State, the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program was founded in 2007 with the goal of documenting Oklahoma's history in an accessible way. This has expanded to include collections on anything from women in Oklahoma's legislature to the stories of tent circus workers in Hugo, Oklahoma. To learn more about OOHRP's work, visit library.okstate.edu slash oral history and find us on Facebook and Twitter at OOHRP.